In this video, I'm going to talk about Git, which is the system where we're going to keep track of all of the changes that we make to our code, and also the way that we're going to eventually submit our assignments. The purpose of Git in a professional environment is what's called version control. So it keeps track of all of the changes made to a code base over the entire lifetime of that code base. The idea of keeping track of a set of changes over the lifetime of a file or set of files is not just related to code text files. If you've ever written a report during school, then a lot of times your set of files is gonna end up looking like this, where you start out with one version and through the set of revisions, you wanna keep your old versions. If you've ever done any kind of client work where you're dealing with uh, design files, then it can end up looking like this, where all the set of re your revisions is kept track of by copies of the file. Git is a program that we're going to use through the command line that keeps track of all of the changes to the files inside a folder. In Git, that folder is referred to as the repository, or repo for short. Every time we make a change to a file, we're going to record it, and it's going to create what's called a commit inside of the Git system. All of the series of commits are held inside of the repo. Just for this first video, I'm going to show how to create a repo from scratch even though that's not how we're going to submit the assignments. So now I'm going to create a folder and we'll create one file inside that folder. I'm going to create a folder now. And I'm going to CD inside. I'm going to create a single JavaScript file uh, by using the touch command. I've opened this file inside of VS Code, and now I'm just going to create one variable. And I'm going to save it. I created a folder, I put a JavaScript file inside of it, and I added some contents to that file. Now I'm going to create the actual git repository. I do that with the git init command. On the command line, I want to make sure that my present working directory is the folder that I just created. Now I can type in git init. It's going to tell me that it initialized an empty repository. If I look at the window where I have this file and folder, I can see that there's a .git folder that got created. This is what's called a hidden file. And on a Macintosh, if I need to see this file, then I can do command period, and it'll make this uh, hidden file appear. This hidden folder is the actual folder that keeps track of all the changes that I'm going to make. The git version control system wants to keep track of every file that I have in that folder. We can see the current status of the repo by typing in git status, and it'll tell us the status of all the files in that folder. Git status just told me that I have untracked files. So it means it hasn't begun tracking the status of this script.js file. In order for Git to begin tracking the status of a file, I need to add it explicitly into the repo. I can add the file by typing in git add and then the file name. After that, I can type in git status to see that the status has changed. Now it tells me that the new file is ready to be committed. I'm ready to officially start recording the changes to the lifetime of this file. I'm adding a commit and I'm adding a message that says what set of changes are in this commit. I can look at git status again and it says that all of my changes have been saved. I can look at git log and it'll say that my commit has been recorded. I'm going to make an edit to my JavaScript file and then record this change inside the repo. I'm just going to make one change to this number. 
And let's take a look at the command line. If I do get status, it says there's nothing to commit and there's no changes. That's because I haven't saved the file yet. So I need to actually save the file before Git will detect that uh, anything has changed. So now that I've saved the file, when I do get status, it gives me a message that one of the files is changed. So now I can go back through the process of recording this change inside the repo. Git's saying that I have changes that are not staged yet. So I'm going to stage those. I'm going to do git add, and then I'm going to do commit. Now that I've done add, let's look at the status again. And it says the changes are ready to be committed. So now I'm going to do commit. And the message is an English language description of what I changed. After I do the commit, it verifies that I've done the commit and I can see that inside of the log. So now I've made a second commit and this commit just records the changes of the text that I've made to the file rather than the adding of the entire file itself. When I look at VS Code, I see the version of the file with the new number of pancakes, but Git has recorded the old version of the file with the old number of pancakes without me having to hold a separate copy of the file inside my folder. Advanced usage of Git allows you to go back to any of the old versions of the file, get the old contents, and rearrange them as you see fit. Let's review the actions that we do to the files, the edits, the commands that we run on the command line, and what's happening inside the repo. Let's review the series of edits to the files commands that we run on the command line, and actions inside the repo. To begin with, to create the entire repo, we do git init on the command line. We already have our script file, our folder, and something inside of the JavaScript file. Git status tells us that we have uncommitted changes inside of the folder. Our file is brand new. We do git add the file name to begin tracking the changes to this file in the repo. Git commit -m creates the commit and adds the log message into the repo. If we change the contents of the script.js file, git status will tell us which file has changed. The git diff command will tell us what changes within the file have been made and show us those changes. Git add stages the file and gets it ready to be committed. Git commit officially records that set of changes inside the repo, and the message records an English language description of what changes those are. If I make further changes to the repo, the process repeats itself. I've made changes to script.js, I see git status, I see the changes inside that file, I add those changes to be staged, I commit those changes into the repo. The process repeats itself over and over again.